socially distance the move and guts if you need to, so that you are able to see the screen well. And we encourage Gina and anyone else to participate actively in the worship time. So um, anybody else that feels like they want to come up and play an instrument or just do it in your seat, please feel free to do that as part of our engagement in our worship time. That's what it's there for. We now share a moment of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to one, the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have all gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces, our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from, us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors and ourselves. Amen. Romans tells us all have sinned and fall short of the glory of the kingdom. And with our sincere repentance and by the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes us righteous, that is, in right relationship to God. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you.
I think a little different than the big ones. The first lesson comes to us from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah, beginning with the 7th verse. Thus says the Lord, sing loud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come, and with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path, in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 126, which we will read responsibly. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then on our mouth. Read this one. Um, I will continue. <laughs> then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second lesson is from Hebrews, the seventh chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest 
holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted among the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to Praise to you, O Christ. Would you pray with me, please? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Finally, after week after week after week of examples of how the disciples, and by extension, all of us struggling followers, all get it wrong about who Jesus is and what he's up to. Finally, today we have a story that illustrates someone who gets it right. Who gets it? Today we get to learn from someone who is the positive example, rather than the negative example, although we can always learn from either one, right, if we're open to it, right? Bartimaeus is our role model today. He gets who Jesus is. When he shouts out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, it's a statement of faith. He's already convinced that Jesus is destined to rule, that he is the God-ordained, rightful ruler of the world. It's that reversal of expectations, the one who is thought of as the very least value and an outcast from society, is the one, after all the many failings of the respectable folks, who gets who Jesus is. And Jesus' final words to him affirm that faith. Bartimaeus gets it. 
That means he's active in his faith. He's compelled to reach out for Jesus. He persists. He's got everyone around him, friends and neighbors and the entire community, acting like naysayers, and he's undaunted. They keep trying to shush him. They keep trying to tell him to stay in his lane of disrespect and low value. But he has an all-encompassing focus on Jesus, and he expects Jesus to do something that matters. He expects transformation instantly. This is huge for us and for discipleship in general. Barnabas just hears that Jesus is coming near, and he immediately expects that Jesus will heal him. Did you come here today expecting transformation? <laughs> expecting your life to be different at the end of this hour? Did you come here today expecting Jesus to heal you, to forgive you, to restore you in some way, to give you a new peace or a new perspective? Did you expect that when Jesus healed, Something will change. Don't walk out the door the same way you came in. This is key to a living faith. <laughs> you're, you're a tough act to follow. <laughs> I'd rather watch you too. <laughs> but this is, this is so critical to a living faith. Do what do we expect? Do we expect that Jesus to change something? And another way of saying that is how could we, how could an encounter with Jesus ever leave us unchanged? How could it? How would, how would it ever be possible to be in the presence of Jesus and to be unchanged? So let's think for a moment. Let's <laughs> dive a little deeper on this for a moment. I'm sorry? <laughs> You do need the That's really helpful for you. Now, Dan, you want to come to me? You want to come to me? What? I think you should have. You're way more popular. <laughs> no. Jesus and his power to do something in our flesh that matters. 
When did we not run headlong toward Jesus? When you think we've got it all together, right? When we have it good and we just want to protect whatever that is, and we don't want anything to change because it's all working in some way for us. We have a temptation to resist focusing on our brokenness or our needs, but it is in awareness of that brokenness that we are propelled to go to Jesus. Is, is it not the case? As most of you know, I was recently given a breast cancer diagnosis. And for the first month, I just kept saying to myself, oh, I said it's little, just skip it out like an elbow, it'll be fine, it's all good. I kept saying the words, I resisted, resisted, resisted. And I think that's such a typical example for all of us when we don't want to see where our need is. But our need is the opening of the door to bring into Jesus for God's presence to make a difference in our lives. When you think we've got it all together, we've got a handle, it's good. We think of ourselves, we don't want to think of ourselves as broken or in need of anything significant. But it's people who are hungry and hurting who run to Jesus for change and for transformation and for power to come into our lives. When we're self-sufficient or self-satisfied or self-absorbed even, we don't run to Jesus, right? In those moments, we are we do not in touch with what we really need. And so I wonder if that same dynamic occurs in society in general. Those of us who have everything we need, are we less inclined to run to Jesus? Or when we're not in touch with the needs of the world, how easy it is for us to think we've got it all together and we don't need to change. The more invested in keeping things the same we are and not looking for change means that we're not connected to where the needs of the world are, either in ourselves or our habits. Does our connection to the deeper needs of the world that sometimes we resist and don't want to hear because it's all bad news. But in staying in touch with us, does that keep us hungry for Jesus and for more of his power to be demonstrated to restore the world of us? Bartimaeus, dear Bart, he is such a great role model for us. He demonstrates some additional, very significant, powerful dynamics. He is a man who has been excluded from his family because he's blind, because in Jesus' day it would be seen as a curse from God, that somehow he deserved that. We don't believe that today. We don't teach or preach that, and we wouldn't ever talk to anyone about their brokenness as being something that God has done to them. In a grievous way. He's broken. Being blind has kept him isolated. He's shunned. He has no money other than what he can acquire in begging. He's looked upon with disdain and perhaps pity, but he belongs with no one and to no one. And no one in society stands with him. More dependent is he than probably any of us can ever begin to imagine. Still, at the slightest spark of hope, Mark tells us that he throws on his cloak. It might be a minor detail in today's mindset as we read this, but given his circumstances, his cloak is hugely important. It's his only possession of that mood. It's his only need of comfort or protection from the elements. It's his tool for begging. It's his instrument for dignity. It is his everything. And everything is what he casts off in a heartbeat. I see. He casts off everything to receive 
what Jesus has done. How strong that his faith and trust in Jesus has to be that he will heal him, that he would make a choice like that to give up everything in the flesh. He throws his whole reality to the wind to receive what Jesus has to give him. He is the exact opposite of the rich man that we read about just a couple weeks ago, who walks away from Jesus completely distraught because he cannot do what our cousin. When we know what we need from Jesus, we jump to let go of whatever it is that we have been clutching to in order to open our hands and our hearts to receive it. And we know what society needs from Jesus. Do we also jump to the chance to give up whatever it is we've been clinging to that gets in the way of facilitating what Jesus wants for the world, for our siblings and our neighbors? Sometimes we have to let go of an attitude or a belief or a defense mechanism, a choice to live in cynicism and apathy. Sometimes we have to give up habits like giving up or being removed just as a habit. What will we be willing to throw off to be more fully restored or healed or energized? By Jesus. What would we be willing to throw off to end gun violence, to end domestic violence, to end racism, to heal the abuse that so many of our LGBTQ siblings have experienced? Bartimaeus, in this story, in this moment, he is transformed from living as what we would call a bystander, but he was a by-sitter, sitter by the side of the road. He is transformed from being a bystander to being a young a follower who is propelled to walk with Jesus, to walk with Jesus on the road to Jerusalem. He gives up everything there is for the possibility of his healing and then walks with Jesus no matter what the cost. I love that we have a friend in Bartimaeus because he reminds us that Christ is alive and with us and is here today asking us the same question. What do you want me to do for you? It's a real question, waiting for a real answer. What do you want me to do for you? How will you answer Jesus? And what will you throw up? Get it from Jesus. Jesus tells Bartimaeus that his faith has made him well. This is one of those phrases that you hear over and over again in the scriptures that's a bit problematic. Because in modern ears, it makes it sound like, well, if we just have enough faith, we wouldn't be sick. But we would trust God and heal us, and God would instantly do that, and no one would ever be sick. So I want to make sure that you hear that's not being repeated. But what it really is about is more of a statement that taking action in faith, taking action in faith changes everything. It opens doors and it welcomes in transformation. <laughs> taking action in faith enables us to be open-handed and ready to receive the possibilities that God has for us, the healing, the forgiveness, the restoration. The real question is what do you want Jesus to do for you? And are your hands open to receive it? Is your heart and mind open to receive it? I pray that you will listen deeply this week to your answer to that question. 
And let that answer propel you to Jesus, trusting that it is his great delight to give you and the world the healing and the restoration and the transformation that each and all of us need in order to walk with Jesus actively and joyfully. Whatever it is that you can feel yourself clutching your hands upon that need to be released, let it go so that you might receive what it is you need to want from Jesus. And so that you might be empowered to be the world of Jesus. Amen. Strengthen efforts of reconciliation among all nations 
and as our nation wrestles with racially and religiously motivated violence, stir the hearts of your people to value every life. Strengthen first responders, preserve them through the traumas they face for the sake of others. Shelter all fleeing violence or persecution, especially in Afghanistan. We thank you that MB was able to leave Afghanistan safely. Shield all Afghanis from further harm. Protect all Luther Lutheran disaster response personnel and motivate the faithful to support their efforts to save lives. That peace extends in every direction. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing one, we give you thanks for all who labor for the health of others. Comfort and strengthen all who struggle with chronic pain. Send healing and relief to all who are sick, especially Kristen Lundin, who is very sick, hospitalized in Arizona. We pray for Erlene Zimmer in rehab for treatment and for Sue Ivan Jack's friend, Claudia Waite, waiting for surgery to repair damage to her knee, ankle, and leg. We ask your healing presence to be with eight-month-old son, Everett Figetner, continuing to recover from liver transplant surgery. We praise you for Ashley's successful double mastectomy and reconstruction surgery, and ask that you continue to bring healing and comfort to David Primus family members, including his cousin Doreen Walters, as she prepares to receive chemotherapy. We pray for Stephanie Truex's cousin Scott, for strength of body and mind during chemo treatments. Surround all for whom we pray, sustaining grace. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Providing one, we give you thanks for all who provide for others. Inspire generosity in your people so that we carry out the work of making disciples of all nations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is For what else could the people of that play this morning? We're ready to start the radiation treatment. And public awareness, fighting alcohol abuse, mental illness, and addiction. My brother Alan. Total healing. And for a uh, peace to come on all those who fall from the terrible, absolutely set judgment. To the families involved, and peace to Alan Worship the best in you as well. Living one, we give you thanks for the saints who have increased our faith. Give us courage to follow in hope until you gather us all around your table of abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy. mercy is confident that you hear us, O oh God. We boldly place our prayers into your hands. Jesus Christ, our true and The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. So I invite you to turn and to look at your neighbors and those on the other side of the aisle and those in the rest of the boxes on Zoom and offer a word of God's peace to them. Let everyone hear your voice and know you are doing this. Just a reminder that because we're not passing plates for offering, the offering plates are there on the table on the way out the door. Please leave your offering there. We, of course, are always welcome to provide your offering through our online opportunities or slide an envelope through the door mail slot or put it through the regular mail. We just thank you for your faithfulness and for your um, dedication to the ministry of this place and to this community and to one another. Thank you so much. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept
accept the gifts we offer, what you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Hopefully you all received the communion um, package as you came in the door. If you didn't, please raise your hand. Our pastor will give you one. And there's everything that you need. Okay. Um, you can give one of the to get you guys back to the front. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, gracious and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of Christ, your sacrificing servant. You call us to follow in costly service to you and to our neighbors. Together with centuries of followers, we offer our lives. We willingly carry the cross you give us and pray to become more fully what you make of us in this meal, Christ's body for the sake of the world. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending prayer. Risen, Christ will come. Amen. I encourage you to take your communion and to face one another as we together commune each other. The bread of life given for you. Bread of life. The bread of life given for you. The cup of salvation given for you.
himself and to share with us in the Lord's prayer. Our Father in heaven, our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, your kingdom come, come. Your, will your will be done on earth, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We sing ourselves out into the world asking for God's love. Things um, with new software. So there was always a part for Pastor Lee. 
um, thanking him for his time and effort and um, his congregation and the members also provided a, um, a cable that goes all the way from the church office here into the sanctuary that enables us to connect in a way where no matter what the Wi-Fi does, we are still connected to anybody and everyone who's with us online. So super grateful for the ways they have invested in us graciously um, with time and skill. So I ask you and encourage you to sign a thank you card for him as well. Finally, probably most of you met Brandon last week. Brandon is somebody that we met through the Clean Streets program who is a media whiz and a photographer, and he is the one that took your picture last week outside here in front of the backdrop. So we have a card to thank Brandon for his time and gifts of skills. He also provided us with all sorts of pictures and videos for us to use on our website, um, just out of the goodness of his heart. So please join me in thanking them, all three of them. Finally, this time, the announcement sheet really should be out there on the narcotics. Table. Honestly, I have to double check that. It is there. It is there. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> to do that twice. Um, Leah left it on the table for me last week and I didn't see it, so I didn't bring it over. So thankfully, they are there this week. So that that is for you to take with you on your way out so that you have all the announcements that you need and information where to go, that you also have the prayers since we are providing bulletins so that you can pray for people throughout the course of the week that are listed in our prayers. And also all of the musical credits. So if you have a song that you heard and it was bad this you want to hear it again, it's out there on the announcement sheet. And for those of you who might be interested in uh, getting a God for our hands t-shirt, the gold t-shirts that we wear when we're out doing service projects, there is a, a sheet out there that shows all of the different options. You can get a t-shirt or a hoodie or whatever. Um, so please take note of whatever it is you want. Um, and next Sunday, there will be an actual sign-up sheet for the items and for you to say what size you want, and then we'll be going with the money next week for that. Anybody who wasn't able to get their picture taken last week, Mary is going to be out there taking them today so that we can add you to our collection of photographs that will enable us to create a new digital online directory. So, um, and it will be the kind of thing where they, we, the person accessing it will have to get permission through the office, so don't worry that your personal information is being sent out to hither and yon. It's not going out in mail or anything like that. Um, but it will make it easier for us when we make updates to just shoot the link to people. Finally, how many of you know what a QR code is? <laughs> we are very sad. <laughs> so, in the pews, and if not now, then in the future, you will see a little card, and they're already in the personal care kits and a couple of other places, where there's a QR code that will take you either to our website or to this Sunday's bulletin. So if you have a hard time seeing the screen, um, we may be able to raise it a little bit more, but for right now, we have to really that. Um, but if you have a hard time, and you would prefer, maybe you're used to looking at things on your phone or on a tablet, and you'd prefer to bring your tablet and your phone to worship, you just simply will um, take a picture of that QR code that's in the queue, and you'll have the bulletin in front of you. Um, if, like today, there's a link in the bulletin, you'll have it too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hopefully that will be minimized as we get more and more used to um, this new process. So thank you for your patience on that as well. So look for our QR codes. They will enable you to go to the website to get the bulletin. They will also enable you to donate if you want to go that way through the website. Is there anything else that's pressing for the good of the community? Because I've done everything I've done. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, please stand. Go in peace. The word of God dwells in you. Thanks be to God. We will. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.